Hey golf people, I had a chance to check out the Ping i230s and I've got to say, wow, 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 wow. I'll be completely upfront with you. Ping is a club that I've never really considered putting in my bag as an iron. I do carry a three with the G425, super forgiving, but iron wise, they've never, they've never really done it for me. Now, I did just recently pick up those old i2s and man, these things might have been the ugliest clubs ever built, but boy, did they perform. They still perform. In fact, I almost had a hole in one with them, but Ping never suited my eye, never really liked the feel of them. But I gotta say, I've gotta say, these new i230s, extremely, extremely impressive. So impressive that I would absolutely consider putting these in my bag for the 2023 season. I'm gonna go through why I think that with you right now. Honestly, these irons to me look like they've got the full package. They've got the looks of a player's iron. They've got the feel of a player's iron, but they've got the forgiveness and distance of a more game improvement style, hybrid style iron. I think golfers from 15 handicaps, maybe even a couple notches higher, believe it or not, all the way down to scratch golfers could really like what they see with the Ping i230s. So in Ping's marketing materials, they talk about firstly, the sound and feel. And I will say these things sound and feel pretty darn amazing at least the seven iron that I was testing. Obviously these are not full forged clubs, but clubs keep getting better and better every year. And the feel of these, I think if you blindfolded me, I don't think I would be able to really tell you to be quite honest. Like we keep seeing the trend in golf is to get the top of that club a little lighter and get the bottom of that club a little heavier to move the center of gravity down, give you a little bit more lift. And as you can see inside of the new Ping i230s, they've got what they call an activated elastomer that's gonna save the weight up top and again, shift it down there towards the bottom where you see a big tungsten weight there towards the toe, that's going to do it. There's also a tip weight, I believe, in these irons as well. They talk about the rounded leading edge. That would potentially help you with turf interaction. Unfortunately, I didn't get to try these out on course and I definitely will because like I said, I'm really considering these. Also, it being a smaller profile, I think these things are gonna get through the rough really well, but of course, I've gotta test that out on course and see it for myself, but that is my hypothesis just by looking down at these clubs. And then Ping talks about its consistent gapping. Now, I will say, and you'll see it here real soon when I show you the shots, on the simulator, the distances were very consistent and I didn't miss right or left all that much either. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's bring you into the PGA Tour Superstore where I tried these clubs out. I took five good swings with my Tacoma 101s and then I took five good swings with the Ping i230s and then I compared them. So let me show you what we came up with. All right, first up, here's my Tacoma 7 iron. I'm gonna take five swings with it hopefully good ones. Then we'll bring the Ping i230 up here and then we'll analyze the numbers. All right, first swing there. Decent contact. I'm gonna hit the right side of the green there. And it rolled off there into the back. I wish I could set a flag at 165. This thing only ever does 160, 170. Back's been there 40, 169. Carried 155. Ball speed 106. Pretty good one there. That could be a slam dunk. But a very typical shot right there, I would say, for me. Back's been low, though, so 35, 43, carried 159, rolled out to 169. That looks like it's going to catch probably right side of the green. Didn't quite catch that one, though. Hit a little thin on the club face. The spin is probably gonna hurt for it as well. 36.90, yeah. Carried only 141, so. Again, not pure contact. That one again, a little thin off the club face. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna go right past the hole though. One of the reasons I like these clubs, very forgiving, even though as you can see, I'm not making great contact necessarily. Pretty good strike there. Much better contact in the last couple of swings. 
just right up right side of the green. Another pretty good shot there. Similar spot, carried about 160 yards or so, rolled out to 167. We're gonna try to get one more good swing and then I'm gonna switch over to those pings. And there it is, that's a good one. Should be basically middle of the green. Look at that thing roll out though. All right, we rolled out to 168, carried 153. Our back's been 3896, so I'd love to get a club. I can get that same distance, maybe get a little better spin. All right, switching over to the ping I-230. We're gonna try to get five good swings with this, and we'll go apples to apples with this data set and see who comes out on top. First impression is just looking down at this thing. I love the look of it at a dress. Much thinner profile than what I've been playing lately. Much thinner sole as well. And the face, not quite as long as some of these real game improvement irons that I've been testing a lot of. So this is much more of a player's look. And it, just in case you're curious, I've got the Elevate 95 gram stiff shaft. All the shafts I've been using lately, stiff between 95 and 105 grams has been the sweet spot for me. So first swing here with the ping. Woo! I'll tell you what, certainly not the best contact there, but it did seem to kind of jump off the club face. And for as bad of a swing as it was, I got some forgiveness out of it for sure. That's a good one there. Just push it off to the right, which I seem to be doing quite a bit of. But look at that distance. Carried 155, rolled out to 168. My spin, similar to the Tacoma, is about 36, well, 3,700 there. So I'll tell you what, the feel is really good though on these clubs. It's a much better feeling club than what I'm swinging right now. And it's definitely much better looking. There's a good one. Let's see where that thing ends up. It looks like it carried past, past the hole just a little bit. It rolled out to 170, so carried 156. We're getting more roll out on this club. Peak height 26.7, a little bit on the lower side, I would say. Backspin definitely on the lower side too, 33.12. Push it off to the right again. Hit the front of the green, rolled past the green to the back side there. Backspin up a little better there, 4,008 RPMs. Ball speed 103, carried 150. Roll out to 165. So getting a lot of roll out with these clubs. Last one here, if we can make a good one, make a good swing. And I would say that's pretty good. Could be in. Ooh! <laughs> that hit hard. Carried 151, total distance 170. All right, let's take a look at these stats here. This is the Ping High 230s here. 103.5 miles per hour, Tacoma's 105.2. My launch angle, 19.3 with the Tacoma's, 21.8 degrees with the ping, so launching a little higher, that's nice to see. In terms of backspin, uh, we're getting 37.30 with the Tacoma's and about 200 RPM difference there, 35.36 with the ping I-230s. The descent angle, better though with the 230s, 42.1 degrees versus 39.8 degrees. In terms of uh, dispersion, pretty close. Pretty tightly dispersed there. In terms of peak height, better peak height by three yards. That's 12 feet difference up in the air uh, with the pings. We're getting two yards further though with the Tacomos, 155 to 153, and the total 167 to 168, so it's rolling out quite a bit more there with the pings. Well, there you have it, guys. I think these numbers were so very close to each other that you've got to think this Ping I-230, even though it's really geared more to a player iron, could potentially work for the mid-handicappers out there very well because it's just so forgiving, and those numbers, even though it's two degrees, uh, stronger than the Tacoma 101s, the number's very comparable. The only thing I'm worried about there, as you could see, is the spin numbers. 
Again, taking it out on course is when I really can tell you how the stopping power of those clubs are. Everything else is a bit academic in a simulator and obviously my swing from day to day changes a little bit too. So I'll hopefully be getting these clubs out on the course soon to be able to go through that with you. But right now I'm feeling really good about what I see with the I-230s. All right, all right, all right. Now we gotta, we gotta talk about the elephant in the room, this shirt. Well, uh, the guys at Proud90 have been outfitting me. I know I've gotten a lot of comments on this channel. I've actually got two of these shirts. I'm an extra large. And uh, if you're an extra large, just put XL down in the comments. I'll draw a random name and I'll actually send you one of these shirts from Proud90. But definitely check these guys out. Loving what they're doing. They're some pretty wild designs and they're big supporters of Let's Play Through. Now this won't be the only ping release of 2023's season here. We've got the G430 lineup that's going to be rolled out. Building on the big success of the G425, that driver was a hit. Those irons, I thought, were the most forgiving irons of the year when they came out. I'm excited for the mid to higher handicappers to see what these G430s will look like. But if you, again, are around that 15, I think you should at least test these things out. Go to your local PGA Tour Superstore. Go to your local golf shop or fitter and just try these new i230s i think you might be shocked too guys i hope you enjoyed this one and if you do want to check out some of the golf clubs that are dropping in 2023 some leaks i've got a few in this video right here i think you'll be really interested i'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of let's play through